Hello and welcome back to Black or Couch Reviews. I'm your host Christina. We are back for the second season of Raised by Wolves. This took me by surprise. I was genuinely thinking this show was going to debut in March. And when I saw the first two episodes dropped, I was like, oh shit, where did I miss this memo at? But we are back. We covered the first season. I'm excited to get into the second season and lift left on a huge cliffhanger. We had the snake monster that was staring us in the face the entire time. And, and quite a cliffhanger to leave one on. Because now I need to know all about what the fuck Lumia just did. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I can keep saying things like fucking Lumia and Mimi can't say anything because I'm not talking about you. This first episode, The Collective, was written by Aaron Guzowski. That sounds about right. Directed by Ernest Dickerson. I gave it an 8.6 out of 10. More Marcus than I wanted, but I honestly just cannot stand this character. I hope they mellow him out, give him something else to do, make him a little bit more interesting. Three dimen- I mean, it's not that he didn't have a good... I don't know there's just something about Marcus that by the end of the season just genuinely got to me but I think I explained last season what it was I think it was more personal (laughs) he just had traits that rubbed me the wrong way and in this episode eh, it wasn't the best following him but by the end of it at least it felt it's going in a direction that can be intriguing before we jump into the recap Stop what you're doing. Rate the podcast. Leave a review on whatever platform that you're listening to this on. I would appreciate it. You can also send feedback at blackoutcouch at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below. My social media will be there as well. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. So we start this episode kind of like Westworld because that's what I was thinking when I saw her just staring up. I was like, bring yourself back online. <laughs> Mother wakes to a ship. But it's not a ship. I thought it was a ship. But it's more like a hovercraft flying over her. The trust has prisoners separating fruit from relics. As we got humans on this side of the island. I was not expecting that. But that makes sense. That they both were going for the same thing. Just one got there before the other. But yeah, they're separating fruit from relics. And it's clear they're from the atheist side of the equation. Two soldiers find mother and call a technician called the Sema. She is played by Kim Engelbrecht, who was Marlies on The Flash. So I was happy to see that she's still getting some work. They found father in the lander as well. These prisoners are strapped to bomb packs the way in which we saw Marcus, which is still, that's a, I will never get past that being a fucked up way to get people to do what you want to do. Uh, as well and seem to be metheric captives encouraged to abandon their beliefs Decima's daughter and they got me I didn't think she was an android Marilla finds the biotech snake skin they believe the metheric bought or brought with them from earth wrong 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 you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong and i'm thinking that this jungle must be lush as fuck that nobody caught it it seems to be a few months since yeah times passed because uh homegirl's belly is all bigger i'm gonna say six seven months they didn't really say it in the show but that that would be a safe assumption they retrieve both androids the one the one wants to burn her for morale the trust has authority and not only does the tropical zone have crossing floods which what the fuck but it's not a place anyone can fly their spacecraft very nice shot of the tropical zone they've come by land but a ship is where both are brought both the both mother and father in the I don't know why I thought to use so many words in that sentence. It's our first introduction to Cleaver, who is basically a mouthpiece for the trust. Uh, but he's human. It seems as if he's human. He gets his permission to perform duties 
from the trust something i can't wait to die dude is bitter about and that's before i learned that the trust itself is an ai guiding their decisions until the atheists are ready to govern themselves and i was like okay never mind he has legit beef but his comrades don't agree too late one of the technicians with his hands in mother's stomach realizes they are not service techs and then his hands and head swell gruesomely this is fucking scary and gross okay i saw her hand move so she activated something in self-defense she disarms cleaver that was just boss ass very easily but a distorted voice calls her by name and calms the man so he takes her to quote unquote him she was made by the metheric turned atheist so it makes sense but sister what do you mean something tells me an episode of family feud is in the future it's like a collective tree of life and considering that paul was talking about some tree that needed to be grown i'm like oh what is all this symbolism (laughs) it's too much but i'm taking note they were downloading their memories mother and father so the collective or the trust knows all about what she's been through but does have or does not have access to her encrypted files which are private she said it so matter of factly those are private and while she has impulses that are human this ai that's supposed to take that was supposed to take over earth if they won the war is more quantum in his data it thanks her for taking out the metheric threat by killing the mothership that they had when mark is soon to be eliminated they said there's one left but there's actually two right or did he kill that other guy i can't remember no i think there is only one left they also located her children and intend to release them to her 3,000 miles from the tropical zone marcus manages to take down a ship meant to kill him and hijacks it to take him to where the atheists are he tries to send all the missiles toward it which is dumb i would have tried to come up with a game plan <laughs> but he's not thinking straight because when he can't fire the missiles he decides he's gonna kamikaze this shit thinking that soul will save him cleaver wants permission to fire the missiles at the ship and kill this annoying motherfucker but the collective i need to stop calling it the collective because it's the trust right the collective is just the name of the community so the trust takes control of the aircraft and crashes it into acid water which sounds like the worst way to go but of course he lives he starts to find the steel plates with symbols then a cave and the symbol of soul and thinks he's blessed and at this point i can't even blame him cats don't have as many lives as this dude but this is also my issue with a lot of organized religion is you get a sign and everything points to it must be so guiding you or it could just be some fucking plates out here because you know people leave shit behind (laughs) society was here why is that not crossing your your path dude you're you're choosing your belief in blindness to any other explanation that's what the issue is it's like no mom i just wasn't blessed i worked to get here (laughs) father and mother reunite as this is what her creator prepared their mission for she doesn't feel like a failure which kind of alleviates her because she knows what she did but also doesn't tell them that she birthed the destruction of all to father's dismay why the fuck you lying why you always lying Mm, oh my god stop fucking lying always lying to me too much lying so much you champion is of course the first child to grant mother and father they raised that boy from (laughs) from inception so of course they have to have their private moment then we get the other kids i will say that growth spurt was real (laughs) that deep voice 
it fits him so much better too because oh my gosh campion sounded like a bitch all first season it's not his fault it's just the, it's the it's the kid problem on any show almost it is very rarely that i watch a show and see children <laughs> maybe it's because <laughs> since i came a parent i'm just like uh triggered but yeah they all look very different i was happy to see them i didn't even realize i missed them until they all reunited lamia walks them to their new home where birds are seen fruit is abundant and air is nice they don't even have to build their own new pad it's already accommodated with a kitchen they got bedrooms instead of rock beds and even video games i laughed so hard when i saw that it was necro slayer <laughs> that should not have been so funny but it was because vita was all over it <laughs> oh and she's just watching it like that's not very realistic holly why are you being so rude you're a regular android now no you gotta throw that in her face but maybe because she wants her to not be a regular android with them eyeballs to get us out of this collective bullshit because i didn't realize because all of them are of some faith even if they even if they aren't completely on the metheric side of things they're not completely on the atheist side of things which has put them in a unique position with the atheists because the atheists don't consider them part of them because any belief even if it's half of a belief is is a no-go and then the metheric are like well if you don't believe how we believe then you're a no-go so they've been ostracized from both places well, at least i believe that's definitely where it's leading up to and <laughs> mother and father are gonna have to to lead these other children that are going to be raised in and kind of both sides of the equation like if you want to believe sure go ahead that's up to you but if you you know you don't that's all right too <laughs> but that's also the, the the really interesting part because none of them a hundred percent don't believe in nothing like uh lamia was first set them was you know even lamia herself and father you know as they're becoming more human that's what they're believing in so it's uh it's i like how the tables have turned so she she just mad that mother is neutered without her eyeballs and mother feels neutered as well mother and father check in where they stand in their relationship he is pleased the place seems welcoming and good for their children nor is he opposed to continuing staying together but he is not the old him and still will erase his memories if need be she looks happy and appreciates the opportunity to make it up to him marcus eventually finds the trio the three that were trying to get away because varel didn't hide at all telling her hey that guy over there says that he can disarm our bombs <laughs> of course his mom goes off the Sima's daughter is an android that's when we find that out because marcus comes running and is able to use her pen to disarm the bomb attached to her and the droid egg hatches attention i'm not sure how they were not discovered that they, they had an aerial advantage it's not as if there's that much damn <laughs> rock around here you can't see i like this plot twist once again labia being disappointed in the promise of the intellectuals and the scientists where are the people we was promised at sue admits yeah so the people who survived the actual survivors unfortunately that's the worst of us so that dream that she was sold by sturges of inspiring a league of greatness or a, a future of greatness to humanity mm, that's in fluctuation cleaver arrives with paul who had to be monitored because he was hearing voices everyone is happy to see him but he looks angry still but only at sue <laughs> he also didn't get mouse but at least cleaver had a good reason like we can't we don't want to risk introducing a earth 
species into this eco ecosystem because i don't know what the fuck that and mice mate for i mean i feel like they will find something to fuck and reproduce <laughs> i don't know uh to survive as a species i've heard species um becoming both male and female so that they can reproduce life will find a fucking way but him being mad at sue for killing his real mom and then her saying i want to be in your life i'm with him you just can't you you can't uh you might forgive me one day but you ain't gonna forget no one's ever gonna forget that she finds sue lamia crying later she's packed up she intends to be assigned somewhere else she's like there's some uh books on parenting i can get you <laughs> it's like she's like i killed his mother like uh they, they, they really ain't no coming back for that but i still care about him and i still love him and i'm gonna respect him and that's so fucking rare that i like the way it went she realizes that he heard the same voice as marcus and when lamia confirms that she too heard that voice in a virtual space she said i also implant, <laughs> intend to stay in the real from now on uh that starts the the investigation on what's going on here lamia figures it's a signal and since it's something that humans and androids can both hear it might be important so mother says if you find anything include me she's a true atheist so if anything goes down and they have to leave they can have an inside person she tucks in paul with father watching campion shares a room with him and has collected quite a lot of projectiles uh lamia mother hens him wow let me try it again lamia mother hens him but he knows he stepped up to the occasion just like y'all taught me and will help paul she tells him she's proud and will make sure he reaches his potential to be a leader maybe of the trust when the trust is ready to pass the baton I'm like you got a lot of trust in something that is not trustworthy <laughs> and you should know from experience with your untrustworthy ass he doesn't want to be a leader but it's that which makes one the best a woman must repeat her crime aloud which was threatening another colonist pain is violence violence is pain they are all assigned to gather food except for lamia who reports to marcella in the tarantula is that what it was called i do love the whirlpools they got going on on both sides of the island she is taken to a room full of children orphans and is placed as guardian she was probably singing that mariah carey song oh i ever wanted was you she was so happy vita is paired with father when he greets some colonists they call them mithraic scum because racism is definitely or not racism classism so so religiousism wait that's so there's a word for that <laughs> bigotry let's just throw out a whole bunch of them she's a child he tells her not to fear them because they are too stupid to be dangerous and i'm like uh the dangerous are often the most stupid father you need to learn that life lesson and that she isn't scum she said i know bitch you just jealous of my super saiyan swipe she and father explore a cave where there's some paintings and claw marks like old hieroglyphics or some shit they find not toys little girl but relics which father intends to investigate marcus is in good company with decima as not only is she a metheric but was the one to break the agreement with the trust due to lying that the ship was fully operational when it wasn't so she's got a little bit of a against the man thing going on she's also the engineer of said ship she built it marcus is a believer without being scared of what it could all actually lead to good things don't encourage you to do bad things which is exactly what campion says a little bit later and i really love how that relationship has improved the paul and campion one it's it's the one we're gonna have to look forward to in the future i feel 
uh, if they were ever to grow up. Well, they do, because didn't we start with like an adult voiceover? Uh, the two gather food. Paul doesn't want Campion to lead the atheists. He knows his mother is being his mother, but it's his choice, and that ain't it. They discuss the prophecy and his love of soul with two men competing for that orphan boy position. He tells him he does indeed believe in soul. So don't say I'm an atheist because I'm actually not. I just think he's evil. Like, you believe in God? Uh, I'm looking for God. You met the devil. Because <laughs> he keeps telling you to do bad shit. Uh, Paul finds something from old times in the dirt while Campion snatches an egg and both agree to keep each other secrets. Marcus tells the Sema he was brought to this cave to bring worshippers. She's like, but I wasn't baptized. I don't care about that shit. <laughs> I laugh so hard at that line because it's so authentic. He's like, yeah, I care about me being special in God's eyes and what I'm supposed to do and what I'm being led to. I don't care about the construct of it all. You know, he intends to convert all 300 of the atheists as the trust can't grant purpose because it's a machine or dreams. He manages to convince her ass. This sounds like he's building a hippie commune that's also slightly more David Koresh. Lamia brings eggs for the kids to paint. One remarks that she was an exterminator, but she admits she changed like humans can do. And while she can't produce human life, she is forever its guardian. Then it pans to kid <laughs> drawing that snake. <laughs> you know what you did. She tells him not to draw something scary, but he replies it's beautiful as all living things are. And she ponders on that because the, the things children say are very true. All living things are beautiful, even if they are carnivores and all things are, ki are killers, including humans. Stop putting ourselves above on a fucking pedestal <laughs> just because that animal looks so vicious and looks like it will kill everyone. Maybe she'll tame it with her love. Marcus wakes to singing and thinks it's both his uh, son and Sue. But no, it's his new adopted, adopted family, but he misses his own. He asks Soul to free him from his loneliness. I'm asking Soul to put him in some damn water because he looks so fucking dirty. Uh, just as he's requesting this, someone is setting the equivalent of a burning cross at the doorstep of Lamia and her children. She's like, what is this? He said, white woman, this is a threat. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> a very recognizable <laughs> threat built in my melanin. <laughs> so, uh, that, yeah. They've been definitely getting a lot of hate. Even with the trust saying you, we need to accept them in the community. The community is like, no, I will not. Uh, interesting to see where and how this goes down. Um, I have a lot of questions for this season. I'm not mad that there's supposed to be 300 people and we're seeing maybe 10. It's this COVID, man. I'm never going to get mad at a, a show for not having all the extras they probably would have wanted and loved on set to make this seem more like a colony but it, it the world fucking sucks so uh i thought it was a good strong premiere it definitely gave us a trajectory of the season set it up very clearly and uh what's gonna happen with lamia is she gonna get her eyeballs i think she's definitely going i think her while she and i think that's why that like i don't trust the trust i'm just letting you know that right now. <laughs> i'm never gonna trust an ai because it's not a human and i would rather as fucked up as we are we stumble through our own shit than have some fucking ai that can control everything that we we build uh our houses all that no 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 that's not the right way either <laughs> so how is she gonna get her weapons back um or maybe is there other things built inside of her because she mentioned there there's things in um i could do i don't know maybe she'll have a dolores moment 
<laughs> I'm here for it. I just know that. So if you want to send feedback for our next episode, which I believe is on Friday or no, Saturday. If you want to send feedback, blackrocouch at gmail.com. You can leave a comment below on this podcast. Once again, my social media will be there as well. Remember to like, share, subscribe. And until next time, peace, hair grease, and blacker magic. <laughs>